was under the bridge, but but it was just a game. This, however, is not a game. I was just playing. It's just a bad joke. Under the bridge, the church, the town. Speak, the white lady. Power is back. Now I can develop the role and hopefully have my questions answered. I can't develop the photo like this. I will return to you, Martha. Together we will sort out everything. Just you and I. Dear God, so it's true. I killed my sister. I did everything to hide the truth. Then I killed my mother to rid myself of the guilt. But she was nasty and everything was her fault. God, what does that make me? I don't deserve to live a second longer. Maybe I will see her again and I can try and ask for her forgiveness. But if there is nothing after death, at least I will be free from this suffering. I know it's not right, but I can't do this anymore. It was 
was not easy to pull that trigger, but I did. Once again, though, I was not dead. Bale died in the blink of an eye, as if it were the most natural thing in the world. But for me, it seemed impossible. When I fired, I unintentionally moved the weapon enough that the bullet deviated and hit my eyebrow. I was bleeding and there was a great pain above my eye. The voices grew distant, but nothing more. I fainted and then regained consciousness not long after. I woke up tied to a seat so tightly that I couldn't feel my hands or feet. On the seat next to me was my father. He was breathing, but he appeared to be unconscious. The guy in charge started asking me questions. He kept hitting me in the face and head with some kind of short cane. It was so violent I thought my skull would crack open. All I could taste in my mouth was blood and broken teeth. I ran my tongue across my teeth, thinking to myself that I'd never be able to smile again. A frivolous thought, perhaps, but a painful one nonetheless. Part of my top lip was cut open and was hanging down. I foolishly tried to put it back in place using my tongue and lower lip. I threw up. They forced me to confess that my father had been carrying out all kinds of activity within the German army. Of course, I didn't know anything about it, so I tried to explain. But those punches... I would have done whatever it took to stop them. Whatever it took. Just after I told them what they wanted to hear, the general said, all it took were two slaps and you sold out your father, you German whore. Then he ordered my father to be executed. It took less than a moment. He didn't even move. Then I took a blow harder than the previous ones, and I lost consciousness again. I woke up again on the ground, untied and completely empty inside. All I could feel was pain. Everyone was dead. I was now alone in the world. I felt a desire to hear their voices one last time on Daddy's recorder in the dark room. Provided the soldiers hadn't destroyed it, that is. Yourself in front of the piano that night. What else could we do? 
You killed my sister and now you're afraid because I found out. So you're making up stories, aren't you? But I'm not falling for it this time. What are you saying? Your sister. Please, no. I was not well. I didn't know what I was saying. So many years have passed. You were little then. I thought everyone had forgotten that nonsense. Shut up. Don't speak. Don't say anything else. What are you doing, my daughter? Why do you want to ruin your life? I'm sorry. It wasn't me who just shot Mummy. It wasn't me. I didn't know who I was anymore. Everything had fallen apart. I was afraid of myself. My God, it was terrible. I had always been convinced that I was too good for myself, but then I had become my own enemy. I was the danger. What should I have done? I thought about the puppet theatre in my old room. There I could find something in myself, perhaps. So I rushed to go play with it again. Mummy nearly died giving birth to me. This is what remains in my memory of my mother's, nanny's, and father's stories. I remember little to nothing of my childhood at home. I have to try, though. Maybe the important events I should know are right there. Are you, madam? I feel a sharp pain. Do you need anything? I can feel it. The time has come. Everything is ready. Help! Something is wrong! Edith, help! Irene is not well. weaker. Don't worry, Irene. The pain you feel is natural. Push, Irene, push. Uh, 
The baby is born. I feel sick. I feel myself wasting away. It's going to be okay. Poor mummy. She has suffered so much. I have hurt her so much ever since I was born. Time to eat. Stop being a crybaby. Mummy, I have to pee. Mummy, I'm thirsty. That's enough! Go to your room! Get out of my sight! I can stand you no longer! This is just a game. Is it only a game? I believe the white lady said that my lost memories would return in the place of my happy childhood. This is the only place I have ever been truly happy. Are these my memories then? Is this actually my life? I like 
like that game. What are you doing? Are you crazy? I'm angry with you. I will beat manners into you, you stupid little girl. Come with me now. Come with me. I will put you in your place, girl. Sorry, Mummy. I won't do it anymore. I promise. Too late. These false tears won't help you. Stay still! Now I'll make you want to bark. There's no point screaming, stupid girl. No, Mummy, please. You're in. Sure. Now I'll show you how insane I am. Help, Daddy, help! Screaming won't work. Your father is not here like usual. Eat it. No! Eat! Pew. I won't eat him! I said eat! I was beginning to remember, but I was so scared to remember too much, especially all at once. I didn't have time to guess exactly what happened. It was making me too upset. Pulling out those memories was like trying to pull out a tooth on your own. Almost impossible, and far too painful. The white lady told me that the church is a safe place and home to its children. Donatilio, my priest, I have to talk to him. I have to call him on the telephone.
Not now. Natilio speaking. Who is it? Father, help me. They're all dead. Daddy, Mummy, everyone. Julia, come to me immediately. Don't stay alone. It's dangerous. Come to town. You can stay here with me and we can talk about everything. Okay? Okay, Father. But first I want to play with my puppets for a while. Julia, don't be silly. Come to church right away. to the heroic assistance of Martha Kay, daughter of General Erich Kay. A mission devised by the partisans to steal weapons from the German army has been put to a stop. The same animals were involved in the killing of the general's other daughter, Julia Kay. And in an attempt to murder young Martha herself, the vile traitors were executed on the spot. Justice has been served for Italy, for Duce II. Those boys, they had all been killed and it was my fault. They were my age, and a few of them were our friends. I didn't think it would go like that, but wasn't it obvious, really? What was I actually expecting? I felt like a coward, but what could I have done? Should I have betrayed my father? I loved my father, but I also loved my friend Lapo. Which side was I on? I just listened to my heart. I thought it was the right thing to do, but instead it was the worst thing I could have done. I didn't go anywhere near the soldiers, Germans or allies. They had all caused me harm. I didn't want to approach anyone for any reason. Once I crossed that threshold, I completely lost touch with reality. Everyone around me had died while I survived everything. I don't remember how things went. I just remember a big light and then photographs were being taken of me. There was a man dressed in white, a doctor I presume. 
He was asking me questions, but I didn't understand what he was actually asking me. He wrote something on a piece of paper and then two nurses led me away. I was in the mental asylum. Some women were talking to themselves, others cried. Some were even covered in their own filth. Others were violent and tried to hurt themselves any way possible. There was this one young woman who would pleasure herself all day long, incessantly, to the point where she would bleed. So they would tie her down to the bed screaming, cursing and talking gibberish for days on end. Once her wounds had healed and she was untied, she would just start again. That woman was me. They started to give me injections. What they gave me made my whole body shake. I broke my vertebrae and an ankle. I think it was called cardiazole or something like that. My body was like a fire that didn't want to be put out. When it appeared to be quenched, it would come back, even stronger than before. In the end, though, they won. I stopped screaming and masturbating. I stopped thinking. There was no longer any need for therapy. Something inside of me had died. But nevertheless, I insisted on carrying along this painful journey. I was stronger than I could ever have imagined. Don't go away. Talk to me about Martha, please. Martha is dead. I killed her to take possession of her life. I will never find peace for what I have done. I feared that would be the case. And what about Mummy? I really don't know. Her death could be all my invention. Or maybe things went just as I remember. I'm consumed by doubt. What about Father? The soldiers, did that really happen? My mind is playing weird tricks on me. I saw him sitting there because I was afraid. Daddy is okay. He is strong and able to look after himself. Certainly better than I can. Okay, this is almost impossible to believe. What about Nanny? Nanny is fine. I don't even want to think that anything bad could have happened to her. Are you sure? That brings me great joy. I'm afraid to ask about Lapo. Lapo is dead. He was blown up by a landmine. He got into trouble and paid with his life. My dear friend. Poor boy. Just as I remembered, unfortunately. One last question. The pregnancy?
Martha was pregnant. Her deformed baby died with her. Maybe she was in pain. That's enough now. All of these questions are pointless, aren't they? It's all inside of us. We just need to turn the mirror. Is it not all just the reflection of an unknowable existence? Nothing more than a puppet show. Ready for everything with open arms. Even ready to kill. Legs always ready to run. The womb that conceived in sin. Lastly, the mind. To protect us, it has turned us into monsters. Either way, we cannot live like this, can we? I'll take care of it. I don't need to worry. I'll try to sleep if I can. I've got this. On the 26th of July, San Casciano was bombed and the church was destroyed. But I was not there then. I was already in the asylum. Once again, stubbornly, I was not dead. The bombs hadn't killed me and I had also survived myself. The most absurd test and the hardest one. The war ended some time ago now both out there and inside of me. I was on the wrong side of the gate, but now I can turn the page. Life is opening its doors again, isn't it? If I hadn't been so lucky to survive myself, I would have thrown everything away. We think that danger is all around us, ready to attack. But the most devious and misleading dangers are the ones that are inside of us. They grow without us realizing. They make us suffer, remain confused, and remove our self-respect. I would have wanted to ask for help, but I was alone. This is my story. Thank you for being here. For listening to me. Now I am ready to leave. How long will it take to get home? <laughs>